Once we had got the guts of a show together, we, we realised that obviously our obligation was to try and raise as much money as possible. The sponsorship side had solicited Pepsi-Cola. Pepsi-Cola had agreed to come in. The phone rang and it was Atlanta, the Coca-Cola headquarters. And they were saying, uh, Mr. Goldfarb, uh, this is, you know, uh, Coca-Cola, yeah, yeah, you know. And they said, um, um, is there any sponsorship available for um, the Live Aid event? And I said, no, a bit late, Pepsi have it, ha, you know. So they... Bob, who was the entire genius throughout the entire thing, says, why can't we have two sponsors? And Harvey says, because you can't have two sponsors, especially when one's Coke and one's Pepsi-Cola. He said, but Harvey, you said we couldn't do the, the concert. You said that we would not get global television. You said we would not do this, that or the other. You have said all the way along, we will not do things. Said, and just because nobody else has done them doesn't mean that we can't try and do it. So um, I said, well, look, I am calling it the global jukebox, you know. <laughs> and they said, really? And they said, have you got logos for that? And I said, yes, absolutely. You know, it's this, it's this global jukebox. <laughs> you know? And they said, could you fax us over some artwork that? I said, yep, I sure can. I said, but you'll have to get back to me by Tuesday. Bob just sat down during that meeting and drew a new logo, which was the global jukebox. So I think whichever one it was, one had the plate and the knife and fork feed the world, and Bob invented the global jukebox in that meeting that then became the other one's logo. And we are, I think, now still the only event ever in the history of the world to have both sponsors, Coke and Pepsi-Cola.